Hey everyone, this is round three of my playthrough of Trouble in Sandpoint in the Adventure Path, Rise of the Rune Lords of the Pathfinder... Oh, that doesn't have a card back. Of the Pathfinder Adventure card game. There it is, card back. Um, okay, so we've closed two locations, the Glassworks and the Village House. It's actually pretty rough going, if I'm honest. We have encountered the villain. So the villain is in one of two places. Either the shrine of Lamashtu, an evil god, or the catacombs of Wrath, which the name of that ought to tell you sort of like the character of that location. Not a fun place to be. I can't decide which one to go to because both of them make sense. Either of them could contain the villain. So I'm just going to let the, the die decide. Uh, and since I never get to roll a d20 in this game, uh, how about if we roll a d20? And we'll do odds for Lamash 2 even for um, the, the catacombs. It's a 17 on the d20. So odds was Lamash 2. The Shrine of Lamash 2 is not a fun place. It has a really inconvenient global rule or local rule. But... Let's read up about it first. Lamashtu, the mother of monsters, demon goddess of madness, monsters and nightmares, numbers among the most vicious and terrifying of Galarian's deities. Here, worn steps lead to a blood-stained platform on which stands an ancient altar, little more than a jagged block of black marble. A sense of malice and unnameable fear hangs over the place. So, not... A terribly inviting place and furthermore you've got uh, the lo the rule at this location if you encounter a blessing you are dealt two points of mental damage cannot be reduced when closing this location you either have to banish a blessing or succeed at a divine six check so we'll be banishing a blessing I mean that's that's really our only option I don't know what happens if you don't have a blessing to banish. But Valeros does have a blessing, so we will definitely be reserving that for closing this location. Uh, or else we will literally not be able to close the location. Well, Sioni has traveled to the Shrine of Lamash too. And flip over a timer deck, a timer card, and explore. This is not going to be good. Okay, a rat swarm. It's not as bad as it could have been. Rat swarm is is only an eight to defeat. If you don't defeat it, um, then oh, by at least four, shuffle it back into the deck it came from. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yeah. So she has um, yeah. I I, I don't I don't foresee too much of a problem here. We do need to beat it by six apparently, and I'm going to be. I'm going to be risk. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to risk it. I'm going to say I'm going to use this wand of flame. For combat check, bury this card to roll a d6 plus a, another d6. So that's 2d6. But instead of burying, if you succeed at an arcane 10 check, then you get to recharge it. So she's got a plus 2, so she needs an 8 on a d12 to recharge. She got a six, so it looks like I will be burying this. That's the chance I took. Um, but she does get the two d6. And uh, then, of course... Oh no, I just realized something. I just miscalculated something. I was thinking that she would get a bonus from Valeros. And I just realized he's not in this location yet. He is still back at the other place. Okay. So I think I'm going to recharge the Acolyte to add 1d4 to an Arcane check. So now she's got a, an extra 1d4. And this is just a recharge, which, which is exactly why I like that card. Okay, so now we've got 2d6, a d4. Oh wait, is this an Arcane check though? What kind of, what kind of, what is this? Uh, I don't think this is arcane, actually. For your combat check, bury this, d6, d6, if any. You may additionally discard a, a spell to add your arcane skill. Okay. 
discard a spell. Wow. This is... This might be taking me... Uh, take... Yeah, this might not be great. Okay, I think I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna discard this Detect Magic spell. To make this arcane. So now... And, and I've... I've recharged the acolyte so i've i've got the acolytes bonus here plus my arcane bonus which is a three uh two right yeah oh i'm gonna yeah plus two but wait does that mean that i can roll my arcane die or or that's just making it arcane to add your arcane or divine skill oh oh well that's crazy so i get to roll a d12 I mean, is it even... It's literally... I have so many die in my hand, I don't think it's possible to fail. 8 minus 2 is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. I guess it's possible. Well, it's not. It's, 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 it, she succeeds. I'm not sure how, how correct any of that was, but I think it was okay. I followed the logic myself anyway. Okay, so I'm going to bury this card now. The toad, her ally toad. To get my detect magic spell back. Uh, does that go to her hand or to her deck? Into her hand. Okay, cool. So she's buried two cards. Bury just means that you don't get it again for this scenario. It's not back in the box. It's still, it's still mine. It's just not available to redraw. So I think I think that was her turn, which seemed like a lot of a lot of work for just defeating a rat swarm. Okay, so now where Sioni is at is that she's got six cards in hand and zero health. That's not a great place to be. Luckily, most of her cards are rechargeable, but I mean, if she takes damage, that's not good. So. That's really bad, actually. If you encounter a blessing, you are dealt two points of damage, okay? So she cannot encounter a blessing. Like, if she encounters a blessing, she will be... She will be... She will die. Uh, so what I could do is use... I, I shouldn't do this because I've already drawn. But... Okay, well, I won't because I've already drawn. So I'll just... That's fine. It's Valeros's turn now. I'm going to flip over a card and have him explore. Okay, skeleton. This is kind of uh, Valeros's specialty. The skeleton is immune to mental and poison. If your check to defeat has a slashing or piercing, the difficulty to defeat this is increased by three. Well, this is where the mace would have come in handy, but I had to get rid of it. So, unfortunately... Yeah, it is a slashing effect, or trait. Why did I put that on his discard pile? Um, it is slashing, his bastard sword. So instead of an 8 to defeat this guy, he's going to need an 11. But that is an 11 on 2d10 with a plus 2 bonus. Er, no, actually a plus 3 bonus. His melee is plus 3. I was thinking of Sioni's bonus. Okay, so... That's an 8. That's a pretty good start. 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, that's actually a great start because he just defeated that skeleton. So, cool. Okay. Good. Um, he could expend a blessing at this point. But I'm kind of feeling... I'm feeling like... I'm not hurting for timer deck. I'm hurting for health. So I'm going to expend a timer deck, switch it over, back over to Sioni, and she is going to spend up front her detect magic. Now, when I say spend, of course, she's just recharging it. So that's what she's doing. She has recharged that to scry, to look at the top card. Okay, it's a slashing blade. 
If undefeated, every character at this location is dealt 1d4 combat damage. So that would unquestionably kill Sioni. Because that would drop her way below her hand, probably. And then she would have to draw a card, but she would be unable to draw a card. So that's not good. And I don't know exactly what to what I can do to um Oh, she can discard this card to succeed at a stealth check. Was this a stealth or no dex disable? Okay, so she doesn't I don't think she's got anything here that would help her with that. And I don't think barriers count as combat damage. Yeah. Okay, so she cannot encounter that card, or she will die. And in fact, she can't even be at this location when encountering that, or she will die. And that's the advantage, obviously, of scrying. Uh, she was able to see, foresee the future. So we're going to leave the Shrine of Lamash 2 right now. I mean, we can't yet, but that's what we're going to do. So she will draw back up to her hand size, so she's back down to zero health. And I think what might be smart at this point is for Valeros to give Sioni a card. It doesn't have to necessarily be a useful card. I just want another card in her hand. Uh, so she will forgo exp exploration. She cast a spell. So it's now Valeros's turn. So we turn over a card. At the beginning of her turn, he may of, of his turn, he may give Sioni a card. She does. And then he can explore, which he is not going to do. Because if he explores, we know. Oh no, wait. So he gave her a card, and then he is going to move to the Catacombs of Wrath. So they are now at separate locations. Let's read up about the Catacombs of Wrath. A sinkhole freshly opened in Sandpoint streets revealed the cracked masonry of some ancient but still intact structure hidden just beneath the town. The new opening into the mysterious ruins exposes darkened chambers, jagged, jagged runes suggestive of demonic horns, and the crimson glow of something old, but very much still active, pulsing in the depths. In this location, you may attempt a Wisdom or Perception 7 to evade a monster. Well, that's great, except we have no Wisdom, we have no Perception. To close it, you're, we have to defeat another Sin spawn. Well, Valeros can do that. It, it's, the, it's everything else that I'm worried about. Okay, so he's going to explore. Potion of Energy Resistance. He could make this with an intelligence check. I believe he's a d6 intelligence. Yes, he is. Two. That's a fail. Okay, it's too bad. I think that's his turn. I don't really think that we can afford <laughs> to... Um, yeah, to mess around here. So that's his turn. Okay. Boy, I was feeling so good about everything <laughs> before this started. Um, so we know that there's a barrier, a slashing scythe trap in the shrine. So I guess Sioni is going to come down here. And because she can, she'll recharge Detect Magic and just do a little scry. And this is a henchman. So this henchman... If, if if defeated, would be our key to closing this location. Which could, I mean, you know, in theory, that's good. The, the scary thing is that she's still really low on health, and so closing this location, in a way, doesn't help us. It just kind of makes it so we... We, we, we get the timer deck, essentially. And, and this is a big stack of cards. So this could be a good thing. 
Um, it looks like it's a, a combat check of nine. If undefeated, uh, if defeated, okay. And, and what's closing this location involve? I forget. Oh, summoning and defeating a wrathful sin spawn. Okay, so I don't know the rules exactly. I mean, she can evade one of them with invisibility, and she can kill the other one probably with a force missile. So, hmm, what does that mean, really? Should she evade this and then kill the sin spawn, or should she invade, evade the sin spawn? Can she evade a summoned creature? Probably. I don't see why not. A spell is... A spell is designed to break rules, right? So, okay, so before we can can go up against... Oh, no, that's to, to close this location, isn't it? Okay, yeah, I was getting confused. All right, that's fine. Cool, so I don't need to do that. Um, oh, but that's the question. Yeah, can she can she say that she's going to close the location and then cast invisibility to evade the creature such... Yeah, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recharge invisibility so that she's not fighting Corvus. Valeros is going to fight Corvus. So Valeros gets his 2d10 and his plus 3 melee bonus, as per usual. And he's rolling for a total of 9, so that's a 7. And another 7, so that's like 14 thus killing Corvus, the henchman of the villain, uh, what's her name? All right, so that's that's done. And now Sioni gets to attempt to close the location. To close the location, she has to, we, I have to summon and have her defeat a Wrathful Sin Spawn, which is a nine, no, a wisdom check first. Uh, what's her wisdom? Every single time. Just cannot remember it. Wisdom. D6. Okay, that's what I thought. So a D6. She could She could do it. Nope. Okay, so a D6. So she fails. So this is increased by 1. So it's a 10. She has to defeat a 10. Um, well, she's got a couple of tricks up her sleeve. She's got the force missile, which is a D12, plus her bonus of 2 plus a uh, 2d4, and then Valeros is in this location, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, because he just killed the other guy. So that's 3d4, a d12, and a d... And, and a bonus of plus 2. So she's recharging that spell. Now the question is, do I want to add even more to that? I could banish the Blast Stone to add yet another d4, and I'm, I think I'm not going to do that. Hopefully I won't regret it. So 10 is the total that I'm hoping to get. 4, that's a good start. So that's, we're up to 6 now. Um, so I have two more d4s to roll. 3, so we're up to 9. Um, oh, so... Yeah, okay, so it's impossible to fail at this point, because, yeah, there's another 3. Even if it had been a 1, uh, there's a 7. It just goes on and on. So the Wrathful Sin Spawn is, is slaughtered. Again, another Wrathful Sin Spawn. Lots of Wrathful Sin Spawns around here. So this location is closed. That's exciting and complicated, because now that it's closed, we don't know whether the villain is in this deck. So what I'm going to do is say that this location's closed, but still populated with cards. And that means I'm going to go explore this location. If the villain is not there, then I will reveal the villain from the closed location and corner the villain. I think that's more or less the spirit of the, the intended flow of things. I could be wrong, but the rules just are not very clear about that, unfortunately. Okay, so drawing back up to six, and I think I did that wrong because uh, those were the two cards that I just expended. Uh, so she's got six now and, and one health, which is great. That's more than she had before. And so now it's really Valeros' turn. 
and I'm going to send Valeros. I'm going to keep her at the closed location. Valeros is going to come down here to deal with this slashing trap that we know is there. But he's going to do that in the next video. Thanks for watching.